This is fairly difficult because uh, in my life, I've always walked on a stage and then I turned my back to the people. <laughs> it, it's much easier, I think, to earn a living that way than to face them and speak to them. And uh, particularly when you're following a coach who's partially comedian, <laughs> two wonderful poets that I like so much. I, I admire uh, everything that you said. And a politician? I don't have a chance, but I'll do the best I can. Fort Hayes, to me, has always been about people. I, too, have KU in my background because my mother and I did a trip when I was a senior in high school. And I was a trumpet player and a singer and uh, fairly brash. We made what I call a scholarship trip. We stopped at Wichita State at that time, a very good school of music in, in, Hay in, Ka in Kansas. And then uh, I received a scholarship offer. Then we went to KU, and I received a bigger scholarship offer. On the way home, my mom said, let's stop by Hayes. We stopped by Hayes, and I did a, I played trumpet, I think, or sang a solo or something. And they said, we would like to have you come here and we'll give you a scholarship as well. But the thing that was really important to me was the head of the department walked out of his office, put his arm around me, and he looked my mother in the eye and he said, I want this young boy to come to Hayes. And I did. <laughs> <laughs> and she was very happy that this man, whose name was C. Thomas Barr at that time as head of the department, he and I later became friends uh, since I've still got five minutes of... of uh, <laughs> it was an unfortunate thing because I was working back in my hometown, Leota, in the summer, trying to earn enough money to come back to school as a sophomore. And he wrote a letter to me, and I opened it and said, Don, I'm so sorry. I'm going to be taking a job at Ohio State next year and I won't be there anymore, and I want you to come to Hayes and have dinner with me. So I came back to Hayes, and here was the head of the department, and there I was, a freshman, but almost a sophomore. And he said, Don, I'm sorry to leave you, and I hope you stay here, but I've taken this big job in Ohio State. Well, I had another mentor then, Don Stout, Margaret's uh, husband, and he kind of helped me through the next three years. And I needed some help now and then. But the people have always made a big difference to me. Bob Dole, for instance, I have one more very short story. I was uh, teaching at Hayes High School. And I had just received uh, an offer and was accepted at Indiana University, which at that time was the largest school of music in the United States, and I think the world at that time. But I also had just received my A1 notice from the draft board. It was at the very end of the Korean conflict. Mary Maud Moore, a student here, a, a faculty member here, and I were out having a steak dinner at the big steak place in town, which I, nobody can remember its name, Ted's, I think. <laughs> And I, was sh I showed her this draft board notice that I had to go in next week to the draft board. And she took my hand, and she dragged me across the restaurant, and there sat Bob Dole. <laughs> and she said, Bob, this young man needs to go to graduate school. He's good at what he does. And <clears throat> he, he, she said, we are now out of the Korean conflict. Can you help him? And he took his napkin out, wrote my name down on his napkin, and in one week I had a letter from my draft board. It said, please come in once more. You are now 2S. You can go to school as long as your grades are good. You can stay there. <laughs> so Bob Dole, uh, I've always voted for Bob Dole. <laughs> Uh, what a time I've had, you know, and mostly all I wanted to do was to teach. I wanted to teach and be with students, and I've got four of my high school students sitting here at this table tonight, and I'm so proud of all of them. And I, I, had a, I was fortunate all my life. I had great students, 
Therefore, it always made you look good, you know, when you were a conductor because they sounded good. <laughs> but that's what made me go. I, had, I was blessed with good students at Hayes High School for two years, wonderful students at Indiana University, great students at the University of Iowa, and finally at the University of Illinois until they demoted me to be the head of that school of music. <laughs> when my wife and I walked in here three days ago, I had the same feeling as I had 54 years ago when I came to school here because people were friendly. And I think the great thing about Hayes to me has always been the people. My wife, who has been a constant companion of mine for 35 years, and I both mentioned that on our way out of the airport, because who came to greet us but Terry Cruel, the director of choral activities, and Dr. Hammond, and I, uh, where else are you going to find that? <laughs> we go to rent a car, and the guy actually helps us move in and out of the car be sure it's all clean, and talks to us for uh, what seemed to be a long time. <laughs> As we were driving to the hotel, everybody was waving, and I said, and this is Kansas. <laughs> it is, uh, it's, it's what you folks have, I think, that makes it special, and that is the people to people. That's what makes us all. That's what helped me in my profession. There are a lot of very good conductors and a lot of conductors that are much better than I. But I was a little bit better with people than most of them. And I think that comes from this school. My brother has always been a constant companion of mine. If I could get him to stop crying during my concerts, it would help me a lot. <laughs> I also have a, a, a wonderful niece here, and they, they came from Tribune, Kansas, and I'm so happy that they made the trip. Dr. Hammond and I were talking uh, because uh, I was telling, he, he knew I was associated with these great universities in the Midwest, and Indiana is wonderful. Even Bob Knight, he and I were hired on the same year, by the way, and we were friends because uh, we had to go speak to freshmen who were coming to campus, and I spoke to them about the arts, and he spoke to them about sports. He became rich, and I became <laughs> nothing. <laughs> but we were speaking about the presidents of these universities, Indiana University, and both of us uh, uh, remember Herman B. Wells with great love and devotion, and he helped you, I think, in your field, helped me in mine. I had great presidents at the University of Illinois, Cunningham that uh, Dr. Hammond also knew at, at Iowa. But let me tell you what I have found here. You folks, and now I include myself in this group from Hayes, I am so proud and happy that we have such a president leading our University of Hayes. And I have known, I think, three of the best presidents of any universities in the United States, and I am very happy to call Ed my friend. Now, the last thing I would like to say is that in our lives, we fight plaque. And we have fight plaque on our teeth, plaques on our arteries, and now I have plaques for my wall. <laughs> Thank you very much.